Um, okay, it's 6.30, we have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. And first up for general information, Mr. Dwyer. Is uh, Norman on Nancy's screen. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm sorry I didn't make the last meeting. I was, I was extremely sick and I was asleep an hour before the meeting. <laughs> Glad um, you're better. Yes, still sick, but better. No COVID, just the chest cold. Just want to put that out there. So Sorry. you're here on the domino signage. Yes. Um, we've hired people off of the signage. We actually hired a Uber driver that was a former employee, which was a big win for us because they've had two to three years experience already, which they just jumped right back into the role. So that was good. Um, we would like to keep it up. For how long? Um, whatever that time period is, 90 days, 120 days. Yeah, 120 days is quite a bit. But let's go 90 days. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously you're still, everybody, including you, is still having trouble getting good help or help at all. That is a true statement right there. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, Joe. Want a job delivering pizza? <laughs> 20, 25 bucks an hour. <laughs> <laughs> you can smile at the customer, you probably make 30. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be, you're going to have some downtime in there because um, the colleges are going to be closed for the next six weeks, basically. We, Still need people. We had um, one guy that brought in four of his buddies and then he walked out all five of them. I was in running shifts. My wife was in running shifts. It was um, yeah. craziness. I, I, I can sympathize with you. I worked part time for somebody and beginning of last, beginning of 2021, I think it was, they hired three different people to deliver stuff. Nobody lasted more than two days. And two of them just quit and never, never even told anybody. Just never showed up for work again. So we had a driver that worked two days, took his uniform off, his hat, left his delivery right on the front sidewalk. Never told <laughs> anybody he was leaving. Wow. Okay. Okay, so that, that would bring us to April uh, 5th. That's our... Um, okay. Okay. I make a motion, Mr. Dwyer. Yeah, I'll make a motion to allow the uh, signage the uh, to uh, remain until <laughs> April fifth and return then. Okay, twenty three. And that's the like signage relative to hiring. That's just a, basically it's a help wanted sign. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I would I would second that. Okay. Motion in a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 4 0 with one app, with Mr. Sarzinski absent. Okay. okay. I will get an email off to uh, Mr. to the building inspector and let him know. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. All right. You too. Take care. Uh, and um, next up would be Andrea Bordet Bordensa. Yes, that is me. Hello. Good evening. Hello. 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 So I have signage up and I did not follow the protocol of applying for a permit because I did not know I was supposed to. Um, so I am here to ask and understand what it is that I need to do to make sure that I'm following the proper protocol and I'm not <laughs> breaking any rules that I'm not aware of. Um, so if you could guide me there, I'm happy to oblige. Could you explain where your sign is and what it's about? Sure. So I own a business on 200 Venture Way in Hadley. And um, the signs are at either, so Venture Way is a U, and the, the signs are at either side of the entrance, both sides of the entryway to the street. 
Um, I have a picture of it. If, if that's helpful, I can share my screen. Okay, go ahead. Let me just treat, let me just um, authorize that. Oh, sure. And that's great because I can. Okay, here we go. Okay. Go ahead. All right, share screen. Um, I'm still, let me see. Oh, there we go. I had to click on it. So it's right here um, next to the UMass sign. Uh, we did the dig safe and all of the safety things. We just didn't go through the town. So that was my, my fault. So this is what it looks like on both sides of Venture Way. Okay, well, you have a problem in that that is not a permitted sign by the zone bylaw at either entrance. Okay. The signs have to be on your property. Um, or if there was a marquee sign, it could be at the entrance, could be at one of the entrances. Now we might be able to uh, be creative with one of the entrances and allow you to put a sign at one of the entrances on Venture Way, but not likely we can give you both. Okay. Okay, sure. And I do have someone who can remove the signs without damaging them. So that's great if I can have one sign and just put it on my property. So that's permissible. Would I still need the permit? You, well, you, you, you I, I believe you would, but one's, one permit could cover both signs. Okay. And we could, okay. we, we could address that right here, I think. So we, we don't issue sign permits. Okay. We, um, we weigh in on the zoning aspects. And as uh, Jim said, the bylaw requires your signs to be on your property. And that's not your property. No, it's not. Um, that's true. We do have a provision in the bylaw that allows for directional signs. And um, we did, in one other situation, allow, um, well, we didn't allow it. They had to get a variance. The UMass Five College uh, Credit Union got a variance to put a, uh, a sign on Route 9 at, uh, on the Staples parcel. Uh, but that was, a, that was a bigger sign. Uh, I guess I'm comfortable with this being a, calling it a directional sign, but just, just the one. Sure. Now, do you want me to literally put an arrow pointing or is it fine as it is? You can pick whichever entrance you want. Okay. Did you say that again? Yes, yes. please say my that again. Screen froze. My, my, my screen froze. I'm sorry, I missed what you said. I missed what you said. I think you said to choose one of the entrances. Is that yes. right? Yes. Okay. You, you, you can choose whichever one you would like. We'll get, we'll, I don't think we need to specify which one here. It'll just give you one of the entrances, <laughs> one sign, and one on your property. That's great. Okay. And I will apply for this, the permit separately. Correct. You apply to the building, the building inspector for that. We will, I will give an email today or tomorrow detailing which, what we're going to approve. And then with that, you, you, he will have a copy. We'll give you a copy and you'll get an email, obviously. And then you can decide where you'd like, where you would, which entrance or exit, whichever way you want to call it, um, <laughs> you, where you'd like to put it. Okay. That's great. They are so beautiful. <laughs> they're, they're, uh, um, the, um, Amherst Copy and Design Works did such a great job. Okay. That's, that's wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate that. It, it's it seems like you're well within the uh, size restrictions, but do we want to get the actual size to have that as oh that, that'll be on the permit, I guess. And I do have the actual size, if that's useful information. Pardon my dog. Um, I do have the size. It's twenty four by thirty six. Okay. Okay, I'll make a motion to allow one directional sign of 24 by 36. Did we answer Andrea's question about if she needs to put an arrow on the sign? I mean, that, would, that would be up to her if she wants to. Okay. Um, I'll leave it alone because it looks so nice. Oh, that's, I don't, yeah. I mean, okay. since, since you're putting it at the entrance, it's obviously going to be 
finish your way, you got to go in there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Perfect. And one on your property. So another 24 <laughs> by 36, correct? Say that last part again. You're going to put one at one of the venture way entrances. Yes. You're going to put the other one at on your property, and it's also 24 by 36. That's correct. Yep, they're both the same size. Perfect. That's okay. great. And you uh, can guys, put it on your property today. Say it again. So on your property today, you do not have one. Right. I just have the number 200, but I don't have the no, no, just just the just your street number. Okay. All right. Do we need to um, f find out what her setback off the street is in terms of sight lines for people pulling out of Venture Way? Because it looks like she put it between the curb and the already permitted sign. Let's ask the building inspector if that's covered by the actual permit application. Okay. Mr. Quinlan? Mr. Quinlan? How you doing? Hey. Well, how are you? Is the, is the per, sign permit application for the roadside directional sign cover how far off of the road it needs to be? Just to, or is it just so it doesn't impede sight lines? We usually have a plot plan and it, it did, uh, it's usually approved by you how far the, well, it, it good question. Usually the plot plan will show how far and we, we check it by that. Okay. Could you put up that sign again that you had for the location, please? Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's probably adequate. It's yeah, I'm guessing it's 10 to 15 feet off the curb, but I just... Hmm. So it did stand out being on the other side of the other one when I drove by on yeah. the Friday before I had stopped because it was closer that I thought you would have, would have approved it. But that would be up to the board. I mean, it might be safer to put it like abutting the UMass sign so it's, you, we pick up that foot and a half or two feet. But okay. I, I would defer to my other no, I, th I think you may you're breaking up, Jim. Beam me up, Jim. <laughs> Mark, that that might be um, a sight line. There we go. We we didn't hear you. You were kind of yeah. All my my connection. Pixelated. I, I keep getting a that message. My connection is unstable. Oh. So it, it keeps it locks up once in a while. I was just saying, I think we need to try to make sure it needs to make sure that that sign does look kind of close to the road, and it might be impeding. Um, what you call it? Possibly the sight line as you're pulling out. Yeah. So I was thinking maybe if she abuts her left post to the right post of UMass, then she's at least maximized the distance from the from the street. I don't think she needs to go inboard of Yeah, no. The, yeah, that, and, that, and that two feet or so might be quite a bit as far as helping it see better. And it's far enough away when you're pulling out a venture way and in, it's far enough away from the actual road adventure way that it doesn't impede. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> right. Anyway, so this uh, this picture is not taken from the stop line. This is a taken. terrible angle. I realize that now. I wish I had <laughs> it from a better. Yeah, it's up close, so it's like on the grass. I'm not even in on the street. So, um, yeah, it's not a really good representation of what it actually is. Well, yeah. I, I, as opposed to saying you have to move it, let's leave it that the sight line needs to be adequate so that you don't pull out into North Maple Street. Yep. And if it's okay where it is, it's okay where it is. But if the building inspector or the zoning enforcement officer or the planning board find out that it's not a good location, we may ask you to move it back closer to the UMass sign. Fair. 
That sounds right. fair? Yes, for sure. Okay. okay. Yeah, thank you. This is yep. so much appreciated. Okay, so the motion now is to allow one directional sign 24 by 36 with adequate sight lines. Right. Okay. There a second. Second. I would second. Okay. You have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? I would I would just say that I am you know, I'm not standing there looking at it, but from memory, I would lean towards removing the north sign because the north um, end of uh, Venture Way is on that hill and people come over the hill and so there's less visibility distance. So I would lean towards suggesting that the southern entrance be the one that stays, but I just I think that might be safer. But that, that, that that's a good that's a good advice for the applicant. No. Yeah. Good information. Sure. I'm open. Yeah, that works. Yeah. So I, I don't want to open a can of worms here, but we sort of have. We approved um, one business for that location. Was it Desco? That sounds right. Desco is head. Yeah, I own Desco as well. Desco's housed in this building. Okay. Um, I don't recall at the time whether we addressed the possibility of other tenants in the building. So VentureWay is the the LLC of the building, so it's a separate. But Desco is housed here. We do. There are Shraddha Yoga does rent here, but not like as a permanent. It's just they host classes here and we have their insurances and all that. Is that something that I need to, that's important for me to know, uh, to, to go through that I totally did not, I was not aware of? One of the triggers for site plan approval is a change of use. <clears throat> and we're usually pretty uh, understanding about it. Retail to retail, we don't even worry about it. But if you change from... Uh, an office space to a yoga studio, for instance, you know, there might be an impact with, uh, might be a traffic impact for something like that. So um, we do uh, generally ask people to come in and talk to us about what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And usually we can waive further site plan approval because the site will be perfectly adequate. Um, if you told us you wanted to put a nightclub in there, uh, we might look at it differently, but that's why site plan approval is triggered by a change of use so that uh, we are interested. Uh, maybe we, so right now you call it uh, Venture Way Collaborative. Uh -huh. So you have two uses in there? Two tenants. Two tenants. I, I mean, full-time tenant? I mean, does it matter if it's full-time or not? Well, there's you as a landlord, and then you have Desco, right? Yeah, that's it. Desco's the um, only permanent tenant here. It was just one of those things a friend had mentioned, hey, Shraddha Yoga's looking for a space. I said, okay, how many classes? A few a week? Okay, no problem. Um, so if that's something, then I absolutely, yeah, whatever I need to do to make sure that that's okay. Um, cause they're easy and it's not a whole lot. I know tenants can be a pain in the butt and they are not. So if, if that's something that I need to get approved, then of course I will. And I'm happy to let Corinne of Shraddha Yoga know that we need to pause that. Um, yeah, you just let me know what I need to do and I'll do it. Mr. Quillen, you're on mute. Yes. No, I just wanted to say, uh, this is kind of like Barry Roberts, which there was offices on that building on Russell that he switched to, I believe it's exercise. So, you know, I would require a design professional myself and the fire chief for, you know, occupant load, bathrooms are still okay, you know, lighting and things like that do change um, with the change of use. Okay. 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 So help me. So what do I need to do? For a planning board, you may need to request a change of use. Okay. That's going to cover zoning. Okay. But as far as the actual building use being safe, et cetera, I would suggest you contact the building inspector and the fire department 
um, regarding occupancy and lighting. And I don't know if you need any electrical changes or um, egress and stuff like that. Depending what's going on, you might even need Board of Health involved. So okay. you know, there's, there's, there's other town boards that might need to be involved in what you're changing your use from and to. Okay. But talk, to, get, talk, to the building, talk to the building inspector with the details of what you want to do, okay. and they will direct you as for what you need extra. Perfect. So if, if, as I recall, you had a training space of some sort in there. Yeah, there's a, so there's two spaces. One's um, an open classroom studio space, which is used for uh, my desk meeting, like bigger meetings. It's a thousand square feet, um, a little under a thousand square feet. The other is a workshop space for working on medical equipment. Um, so that is only used by Desco. It has inventory. It has, yeah, machinery, like uh, monitors and things to work on and a sterilizer that's plugged or piped into the wall with a uh, drainage there. Uh, that was a part of the original um, plans for, for use. So the, the um, where's the yoga in the training space? Yeah, it's in the, the, in the additional classroom space. There's a separate door to that space. Um, but yeah, it's a totally separate space. Yeah, so I, I suggest that you talk with the building inspector and get a sense of whether having a dozen people at a time doing training, if you will, uh, versus a dozen people doing yoga really makes a difference. And right. then, um, you know, a, a, as needed, uh, a, a, after you have made whatever adjustments they may think are necessary, come back to us, just as you did now, during the uh, first half hour of the meeting and request a waiver for the additional use. Excellent. Awesome. Okay, I'm learning so much. This is very helpful, thank you. And we're not trying to put you through the you know, grinder, it's just, we, we have to be fair to everyone. And if someone was gonna put a, you know, a, a taco truck on there, that would have different ramifications. So as, as Jim said, a change of use, we have to um, look for unintended consequences. Yeah. yeah, no, it makes it makes it makes a lot of sense. So I have I have no issues with this. I think it's great. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll see you in a while then. Wait, wait, wait. We haven't voted yet. Oh, that's oh yeah. Right. <laughs> that's right. I jumped in when when he said any more discussion. <laughs> that's fine. No, that's that's okay. That's what we're here for. Anyways, we have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? For the signs. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Four is, <clears throat> excuse me, four is zero with one missing. That's Mr. Sardzinski. Okay. Good luck. Awesome. Thank you. Happy holidays to everyone. See you in the new year. You <laughs> too. Thank you, Andrew. Merry Christmas. Bye. Thanks, you too. And uh, next we have uh, Armani George. Although that might not be actually who's there. Oh, Hi, everybody. How are you? Good. Good I'm here you? representing uh, my mom and dad for their sign usage at 249 Russell Street. They had a family emergency, and my mom's not very good with Zoom meetings. She don't know how to use her phone, so they told me to uh, get on here for her. All right, that's 249 Russell. I could not read the plan that was sent. It looked like it was a, a snapshot, a screenshot from like a phone, and it was not zoomed in enough to have details. So I couldn't read the text of the notes on the DOT plan. I don't know if that was just me or if I, everybody. Um, the uh, DOT plan the one that was sent to us most recently and that I forwarded around was also contained in the earlier um, email from them that I sent around about two weeks ago. It was just further oh, down okay. on the page. Okay. So um, let's see if I can. Oh yeah. If you can share that, that would be good. Um, Find also, I, I have her on the phone in case there's any questions. 
Yeah, let's see. There's, um, let's see here. Then there was another one. She sent several. Yeah, that was uh, Marguerite Miller, as I recall. Yes. And hmm. and you're directly abutting the new uh, uh, Hadleaf that just opened. How's that going? Yeah, that is uh, directly next door. Um, I guess so far so good. good. So far okay. so good. Yeah. I'm good. Oh, they're just talking about the leaf next time. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they want to know how you're getting along. Just want to make sure they're being good neighbors. Oh, yeah, no, everybody's getting along. Yeah, okay. The, um, the one that I sent around on December 2nd um did have a plan attached to it but uh, that looks like it may also have been the same plan that was sent around earlier and then um we had something from chuck sign company but that just came in yesterday i sent that around to everyone I'm not sure if that had that had more of a sign location after the move. Didn't that show the signs side by side that had a new five foot by six foot sign, I think? Yes, to yeah. show the location. Unfortunately, I don't seem to be able to open that. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, tell them it's going to stay in the same location we're just moving it to the left closer towards the house she said it's going to stay in the same location they're just moving it to the left closer towards the property so that would be south uh, because as the road gets wider you're just so you're keeping it the same distance from the road as the road gets wider it sounds like yes yeah, she said correct okay so that that should alleviate any concerns about sight lines. <clears throat> yeah, they're very, don't appear to be any, uh, well, there's your driveway, but that's it in there. So eventually how far will it be from the, uh, the new state property line? That I'm not sure. Whatever they well, that's that's important. We need to know something like that. What's it essential? The DO, whatever the DOT sent me, I sent to the board, and then whatever measurements Chuck made, he should have sent them to them. But it is going to be in the regulations of uh, whatever the DOT sent, because we're just moving it closer to my house. As the road gets wider. Right. So it's going to be in the same, we're just moving it to the left. But the DO, the, the plan that I sent to the to them should be what the DOT was there last week and they mapped it out. Okay. So DOT mapped it out and then she said she forwarded it over to you guys, wherever those numbers would be is where the sign would be. What did they map out? Yeah. What did it map up? The only problem was that we don't know if the CEO is um, doing it to their convenience. We don't know if it complies with zoning. I'm sorry, you froze there. I couldn't hear you. We're trying to, the DOT measurement they gave you is most likely is for their benefit. However, the question that we have is, will it comply with the zone bylaws as far as setbacks? Gotcha. We believe so. That's uh, what I believe. That's what she believes. But what are the, 
the zone bylaws for from the road to signage. 15, 15, 15, 15 feet from feet. the property line. 15 off of the front property I'll line. Make sure that they put it. I'll make sure that when Chuck Science puts it up, that it'll be in that. She said whenever Chuck Science does put the sign up, they will put it within 15 feet. We could we could put make that part of our motion too. Yeah. Yeah, she's saying she wants to uh, uh, apply by the laws and whatever it has to be. She'll make sure it's there. Yeah. But now we know 15 feet. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, we can. Uh, the fact is that when when the state changes the lines, um, Honestly, if people are putting up substantially the same sign in substantially the same location, um, but they don't have a, the full amount of the setback, um, I think under the circumstances, sending each of these to the ZBA is kind of overkill, as long as it can be done safely and without affecting sight lines. That's a good point, too. We don't want to, we don't, wanna, yeah. There, these, these people are getting burdened because of the move, mm -hmm. and in some cases, the slide, the fifteen feet could end up in in their building. Right. I would say that if they a, okay. a lot of room. if they yeah. move their sign the same distance of what the property distance that they're losing, that's fine. Then, if they weren't fifteen feet currently. We can they can grandfather that same distance so that they're not double penalized. If that makes sense, that's exactly mm -hmm. what that's exactly what we're intending to mean, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll make a motion, Mister Dwyer. I'll try to write it down so make it as clear as we can. Yeah, I'm working on it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'll make a motion to approve the sign re relocation and sign redesign, provided the new sign is 15 feet set back from property line or no closer to the new property line than the current sign is to the old property line. That's that sounds good. Sounds fair enough. And I don't think I can't remember was is the sign currently illuminated? It is not external. Right. Correct. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think the sign you were going to change. The configuration of it, but the illumination of it will will remain as as is external illumination. Is still going to be external. Would we be able to do it? Would we be able to illuminate it from the inside, like the half the leaf has? She wants to know if she'll be able to illuminate it from the inside, like the sign next no. door. No, no, no it's new sign. External illumination. External illumination. So you got to sign. You got to shine lights on it from the outside. Only external illumination. Yeah. Anyway, that I have it now. Okay. okay. Greetings from Bogota. Hey. Oh my God. Let the let the record show that I arrived at seven o two in the back seat of a cab. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We have a motion and a second. Any other? Any other? Do we have a second? Yeah. I would second. Okay. We have a motion a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously with Mr. Sarzinski present. 
Why don't you have him abstain since he missed most of the Oh, okay. Discussion. I abstain, yeah. All right. I abstain. Came in late. That's right. It's a good point. Thanks, okay. everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My mom says thank you, too. She's on the phone. Yes. She's very welcome. Um, I believe... Mr. Mr. Maximowski was... Yes. A, just to springboard off of that last um, presentation, was he saying that Hadleaf is internally illuminated? We wouldn't have allowed that, would we? No, I don't believe it's externally internally illuminated. Uh, I, that's what I thought she said to him, was can we do it internally like they have next door? <laughs> like but, we okay. had... I, I, <clears throat> I thought she said like we had before. Oh, had, oh okay. <coughs> I, that, no. her, her old sign is not internally illuminated. It shouldn't be. No, I don't think so. It was grand it was not grandfathered. No. Okay. Okay, Thank next. You know. Last up. Uh, that's it for oh. the administrative. Okay. I do have colony estates down for a discussion of about inclusionary zoning. Okay. Mr. Gelinas. Oh, Mr. Seawald. Good evening. Are you speaking to Mr. Mr. Gelinas? I am. I believe he's on the, uh, he's on as well. Okay. And I will not be participating in this decision. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Maximowski. Um, so uh, we're here to discuss how we can fulfill uh, the inclusionary zoning requirement for the colony estates subdivision. Um, I, I'm, I know that some of you were uh, on the board back then. I don't know if all of you were, but I'll just very briefly say that this is a, an eight uh, an, an eight lot subdivision in the north end of town, and um, it's off of Shattuck Road on a new cul-de-sac road. It was originally filed as a 12 lot subdivision, um, but when uh, Mass Heritage got through with it, it was an eight lot subdivision. So uh, <laughs> Mr. Gelinas has already uh, given up four of the lots that he thought that he was going to have there. And so we're trying to figure out how best to meet the inclusionary zoning requirement. You know, I've reviewed your, your bylaw, it seems like there are three possible methods for um, uh, for um, meeting this requirement. Uh, one is to provide uh, a unit on site, which um, I would suggest would not make a, a whole lot of sense given the distance from everything that this uh, subdivision is not really a, 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 a likely place for affordable housing. Um, the second is to find a, uh, an offsite location for an affordable unit. And the third is uh, a payment in lieu. And so, um, as I said, it doesn't make a lot of sense economic or otherwise um, to try and provide a lot uh, on within the subdivision and develop a, um, an affordable um, unit on the, in the subdivision. There is a possibility of a, a unit uh, that uh, Mr. Gelinas owns on, um, on, I believe it's on Middle Street. Am I right about that, Peter? Middle Street, correct? Yes, yes it is. Yeah, not far from Route 9, a much much more appropriate location, particularly if, it, if it's going to be a rental unit. Um, and so this is the first subdivision to which this inclusionary um, bylaw provision as it now stands, is has been applied, and so there's there's really not much in the way of history here. Um, your bylaw is a particularly restrictive bylaw in that it, uh, I believe, seven is the limit, um, and you know seven triggers the requirement of providing um, a, an affordable unit. And uh, you know, for instance, in Amherst, it's ten. Uh, so this is a small subdivision just barely meeting the, the threshold, uh, which has already lost four lots to Mass Heritage. And so we're trying to find a creative way, perhaps to 
um, you know, to meet this obligation and um, um, and allow the release of of the the lot that's being held for the affordable housing uh, inclusionary zoning requirement. Um, so um, one of one other thing that I note in in the bylaw is that the payment in lieu is uh, was. Uh, anticipates the the promulgation of regulations around how that's to be determined, and I understand that there are no regulations. So, um, with all of that, um, you know, I would suggest to the board that um, the that in my experience, and I've been town council both in Amherst and I'm city solicitor for the last ten years in Northampton, and in my experience, the best way to maintain affordable housing and stay over that 10% threshold that we all are striving to remain over is to keep the affordable housing stock that you have. I know that if there's a, a one of your affordable housing developments is coming off of, uh, uh, is timing out in, in 2023. And you know the best way in my view is to keep those kinds of affordable housing projects affordable. And the way to do that is to put some money together. And, you know, we, we have been successful in Northampton in, in developing affordable housing. And one of the ways we've done that is to have some seed money, some money for an organization to take and do feasibility studies or just to uh, assist them in getting off the ground and getting other grants and getting other funding sources and uh, developing or maintaining the affordable housing um, by that means. On the other hand, you know, to have a single um, unit, you know, all by itself um, requiring uh, a, you know, a plan for marketing and for a lottery and to hire an agency to moderate monitor one single unit all by its lonesome doesn't make a lot of sense either to the town or to a developer um, because um, it doesn't really help with your inventory all that much. And, and it's, it's actually more work than, than really it's worth in terms of keeping the, the town over the 10%. So that's just, you know, my 30,000 foot view of this. Um, I know that Mr. Gelinas would very much um, like to entertain the possibility of a payment um, in order to uh, to start funding the creation of new affordable housing or to see if you can maintain the affordable housing that's already in your inventory. So that's where we're coming from. Um, and I'm happy to entertain any questions or uh, any comments. Uh, I think this is sort of a... Um, a new conversation for the for the board, and obviously it is for me as well. Yeah, um, I'll, I will speak for one member of the planning board that I agree very much with your last two comments about having a loan affordable housing unit is kind of uh, inconvenient from both the applicant's point of view and from the town point of view. Um, and getting a donation in lieu um, would be nice. That is something that we need. We've, we've tossed around formulas and we haven't come to any, any conclusion on it, but we do have some numbers in mind. And um, I'll be honest with you, the payment in lieu is not inexpensive. It's pricey. So um, once we formulate that number, it'll be up to the applicant or the developer to decide which is the best way for them to do that. Oh, uh, would you would you like to tell us what what number you're thinking? We were thinking you... we have we have talked a number of ways. Um, I don't remember exactly at the top of my head what the last numbers we tossed about was. I look, I would I don't I'd hate to throw out a number right now because I don't want to look back into our notes and see what we had. But it was I I'd rather not. I don't Mister Dwyer. I can remember off the top of his head what the numbers were. No. Ken, Ken might. I, I can't remember if it was a dollars per square foot or, um, you know, I, oh. I know that Mike was coming up with a, 
Yeah, I think it was like hundred thirty thousand, hundred thirty thousand dollars. Uh, but that was based on that formula that we came up with. Now, you know, th- this this is causing the house cost of housing to go up in town. So, at least where I live, East Commons Drive, I'm pretty sure that Barry Roberts built the uh, payment in lieu into the cost of the housing. Okay, mm. so uh, just that's just the way it's going to be. <laughs> but. Uh, how many houses have been built there so far? That I don't know, Peter. How many um, houses? There is uh, currently one, two, three, and a fourth is under construction now. But we how sold. Many, how, how many have been sold? Um, we ended up effectively selling lots. We did one spec house and, and uh, lost money, so we just sold the lots, and and mm-hmm. uh, and that was that. So yeah, what you know, what, in, what we. What, what we what we did in the formula that I came up with it became kind of kind of cumbersome because it had a few quite a few moving parts was to see what it would cost to build affordable a unit uh, that we we're going to offer as affordable and then determine what affordable meant in terms of how much rent could someone pay a month okay or, or per year and we ran a cash flow out over I don't know ten years or so and discounted that that to the present and saying that, well, this is the amount that's being subsidized, $130,000 at present value. Uh, Now that was using interest rates that are a bit lower than they are right now, but that's how we did it. What does it cost? What is the actual cost of subsidization? subsidization? And the cost really is what it costs to build a place and what you get in rents, okay? Plain and simple. Um, And and, uh, we, we never... We never voted on that uh, yeah. formula because it became a bit cumbersome. Yeah. You know, the, clearly, clearly, someone that needs affordable housing probably can't go out and get a mortgage. Okay, given the what the price of housing costs, so we tried to come up with an alternative. That's all. <laughs> but I thought yeah. it was about one hundred and thirty per six units. I mean, I I think it's. Uh, Certainly, we're going to have to take it under advisement, but uh, where was the apartments going to be located? Is that in the old uh, nursing home on Middle Street? Um, no, it's a, um, there's a four family that we have on Middle Street um, over, let's see, kind of to give an explanation, like near Railroad Street, kind of over, over that way. Yeah. yeah. So it's behind, it's behind, behind the- Dunkin' Donuts, I think. So it would be an apartment within a an existing house. Correct. Uh, oh, that's that's one of the things that we we really haven't looked into very closely, and uh, I think we were initially troubled over the fact that it was going to be an administrative nightmare for the for the town to take uh, control of that. So the, the town be up to you. The, t- the yeah, town will not take control of it. Pardon? The town will not take control of it. No. No, this will be up to Mr. Gelinas to ensure with a deed restriction that one of those apartments forever remain an affordable thing. And that's what uh, Mr. Seawall was saying for Mr. Gelinas, for any developer, to go through the effort to address one affordable apartment out of all of the ones that they may own could be more than a bit cumbersome. Yeah, it's onerous since you can't amortize it over multiple. So for, for, from his point of view, he thinks unless the payment in lieu is, is extremely ridiculous, that it would be, you know, pay it once and be done with it kind of a deal. But, you know, I understand factoring in the, you know, the, the unit into the cost of the development, but no one could have factored in the loss of a third of the of the development to Mass Heritage. And so that has really destroyed the numbers in this in this subdivision. I, I, and we understand that. However, you know, one affordable unit is one affordable unit. And we're not trying to be. Um, hard nosed here, but we have to look at what is what, what is the what is it going to be? And the fact that he lost four units, um and uh, that's that is extremely unfortunate. 
It is unfortunate. And of course, you don't have any regulations. So this is something that you're sort of doing on the fly uh, when your bylaw says that you're, you're to pass regulations around um, doing these calculations. And so in the absence, you know, and this has been hanging around for four years now. So we're just trying to come to some resolution on this. And I, I can certainly, I am certainly not authorized to offer you anywhere close to $130,000. It's just, you know, this subdivision just cannot support that kind of payment. Uh, bottom line. Unfortunately, sometimes we make bad investments and the government takes away what the government takes away. And that's, that's out of our purview. <clears throat> Well, it's it's in your purview to to uh, come up with a, a a more moderate number uh, in the absence of any fixed method for determining um, what the payment should be. Um, you know, there are no. We've only, had one, we've only had one example of payment in lieu so far, and that's uh, fourteen East Commons uh, East Commons Drive, the uh, over fifty five subdivision. And so money did come into the till from that. And perhaps uh, we could look at what that ratio was in terms of per seven units and, and go from there. I don't, I don't know how the other board feels, but at least it's, at least it's a little historical perspective about what we, we took in. I thought we thought with that we undercut ourselves a little bit there. Isn't that true? <clears throat> and, and don't forget since that time, building costs have gone up significantly. Um, Interest rates have gone up, so everything's more expensive. So, you know, I understand sure. building all that into your subdivision, but, you know, that was four years ago, and, uh, and it's just getting built now. And so we're where we're, we are, and, um, you know, I could make a suggestion, but it's not going to be anywhere near $130,000. So if that's where the board is, then we'll have to regroup. And I'm not saying that's where the board was. That's where the formula came in that I suggested. And it, I think the formula made sense. It made sense. What, what are you actually subsidizing? And that's what we're actually subsidizing. $130,000 at a present value. Okay. For subsidized housing. But if, over if 10 that, year, over, but I would me? just say that there were a lot of assumptions in that calculation. Oh, a lot of assumptions, the of size of the unit, the, yeah, you know, the cost of tax. Right. Hold back, back up. Uh, stop. The, the, we, we don't need to argue micro yeah. to, to debate the thing about where, what's what's in the formula right now. No, we don't have to. You're right. That's I thought that was buried. What we, what we need to do <laughs> and maybe at our next planning board meeting, hash this out. What should the payment in lieu be and come up with a number or formula and go forward from that point of view? Because um, certainly, the, you know, it appears that the imminent barrister is trying to negotiate it down. And down. We, we could finally make the decision, <clears throat> not if, if you don't feel comfortable with it and we don't feel comfortable, option A would be to build a house, an affordable unit for that remaining lot. Well, or they could That's just... That's a good idea. They could use it, they could put an apartment in any place in town that they have. Yeah, yeah. But, but a lot of people that are in affordable units own automobiles okay well i mean the uh you know the, the op we could we could we'll, let's say it our next put it on the agenda mr dwyer for our next planning board meeting to hash out a number for the affordable payment and loan well i won't be at that meeting i don't think unless i can dial in from a, a plane leaving panama city to boston but uh <laughs> well <laughs> but uh could we ask uh, PVPC to look for other municipalities that have a a uh, calculation methodology so we could look at other? I think I, th I think Ken provided some of those at one point in time, but we I can. Think, yeah, I think we I think we've been there already. We can ask them to resubmit. Yep, we can resend those. It was based on average incomes in uh, I think Hampshire and Hamden County, and if it was Hampshire County. Well, we have we have the average income for the town of Hadley. Yeah. yeah, we have the median. I'm sorry, we have the median income for the town of Hadley per household. Okay, yeah. it's eighty. It's almost eighty-seven thousand dollars per household. Hmm. 
It is. That's it certainly is not. not the regional median income. No, that is Hadley. Right. Right. Hadley is. Hadley has a very high median income. Higher than that's Hampshire what the affordable County housing is. number has to be based on. Or is it the AMI? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what 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 method it was was from. We can we can get that. We'll get that. Yeah. But that's irrelevant because right. um, they go by regional or Hampshire County. I'm just making a statement that Hadley by itself has a very high median income. Right, and we're in yeah, the why, Springfield why, why, region. Why not, as part of the exercise? Why don't you tell us that what it would cost to build an affordable unit there on the remaining lot, and we'll come up with. A number as to what that unit could rent rent for to someone who needed affordable housing, and we'll split the difference. That, 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 that's something to be to be discussed at our next at, at the meeting when we yeah. try to hash this out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so Jim, rather than uh, uh, have it at our next meeting, we probably skip a meeting because it seems like Mike has something to offer. And if he's not involved, uh, okay, yeah, look, that's fine. Well, let's make it for the second meeting in uh, January. And if well, Mr. Glad, G I'm isn't I, in a hurry, I'm glad I called in, I'm glad I called in from Bogota. <laughs> yeah, hi. Good idea. Yeah, I'd like to participate. Yeah, that, that's a good point, Joe. We want, we want, we want a full board, especially yeah. since Bill has to abstain. No, Bill does not have to abstain. Oh, he doesn't. No, he only has to abstain on uh, Mr. Gelinas's request of which way we want to do. Oh, but as okay, far as okay. deciding on the payment of Lou, Mr. Dwyer could absolutely participate. Ah, uh, okay. And we hope he will. I'm sure he has thoughts. <laughs> A big smile on his face. <laughs> He's at the office. He doesn't have his <laughs> assistant, the cat, there. <laughs> I mean, it, it's 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 a it's an it's an I, I will say it's an interesting discussion. Um, it's uh, we didn't oh, feel it, the urgency. It, 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 to it illustrates it illustrates the problem with affordable housing in the state of Massachusetts. That's what this that's what this discussion uh, illustrates. And uh, I personally don't think that this. Uh, Payment in lieu of for affordable housing on the part of the developer makes any sense at all, but that's what that's what we got. That's what the state has. So, well, like I said, at our second meeting in January, <clears throat> we will hash this out. Hopefully, we'll come up with something, a formula, a number. Um, not sure Ma which, what it'll be. Maybe we can create an EIFD and uh, look at future increases in the. Uh, Oh, cool. oh, what? What, the, what did you I'll say, Mark? I'll send you an article on EIFDs. I have no idea what EIFC is. No, EIFD, yeah, it's a uh, enhanced, uh, I forget what the I is, uh, finance district. It's big in California, anyway. Oh. Well, clearly, clearly we don't want it if it's big, big in California. <laughs> 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 All right, we All right, moving right don't, even, don't, even, don't even bother coming up with uh, some facts on that. Okay, <laughs> okay Mike. <laughs> Anyways, okay. So as far as uh, for Mr. You know, Mr. Seawald and Peter, Mr. Gelinas, we will, and you're free to, you are welcome to attend that meeting. This is a public hearing. Just sign into the planning to the uh, town clerk's agenda and the Zoom, uh, what you call it, connection will be there. Thank you very much. And, and if have, have a very happy to, holiday, all. And if you and have two cents to, per, to throw into it when we're discussing, you're welcome to throw your two cents in. As long as Mr. Gelinas gets the credit for the two cents. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for all your insights. That was uh, appreciated. And, and by, by the way, you mentioned those units going off in 2023. Uh, there's been some case law that Bill, Bill Dwyer showed us that suggests that may not be the case. May not. Is a comprehensive permit? Yeah. Yeah, may not. It's, but uh, that remains to be seen. But in the meantime, what we have You still need to keep those numbers up. You still need to keep those numbers up. Yeah. yeah. What we have in front of us is what we're going to be addressing. 
Appreciate it. Happy holiday to all. Thank Merry you very Christmas. much. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Okay. okay. Mr. Quinlan. I mean, yeah, Mr. Quinlan. I'm sorry. Mr. Comia. Um, that was insightful. It's timely uh, mm -hmm. conversation. Did Definitely. Do you, you want to mute M Mike? It seems like we're hearing. I'll, wait, I'll, 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 I'll mute it. I'll mute it. Okay. I can mute it on my end. One second. Yeah. I got you. Um, so, I, yeah, I think based on the last conversation, I'll send over or resend um, the various examples from the other towns. Um, I can... I can come to the the first meeting of the year, but I won't be here. I won't be in the area for the second meeting in January. Um, so if there's any planning or discussion that you wanna have on the fourth, um, I can I can be there, but I won't be here for the 20th. Okay, I can put it on both agendas. Okay, yeah. That way if there's if there's any- the It's actually the third, isn't it? Yeah, first and third. First and yeah. third. And that way, if, if you give it, if you give us that stuff, Ken, we can take a look at it. Maybe we, we can review it on the third and have a better discussion with the with the group and uh, Mike on the uh, the second meeting. Yeah. Okay. So, Thank you. So the seventeenth is one that you can't make. Correct. Yes. Okay. Um, I got the dates wrong. Um, yes, the seventeenth. And if it happens, the third of January is the first Tuesday of January. So we're talking <laughs> about first and third. <laughs> <laughs> if uh, only the Red Sox had a runner on first and third, we'd be. <laughs> um, Ken, uh, specifically when you're doing the, those other town formulas, um, yeah. uh, I know there are also formulas. We've been talking about uh, a subdivision residential dwelling but there are also formulas for apartment complexes. So um, that might be if we're in a situation where someone is offering an apartment unit, a unit being a unit, whether it's a studio or a five bedroom, they both count the same on the affordable housing uh, inventory. Mm -hmm. So um, if there are any formulas for payment in lieu for apartment construction that might be more informative to a situation like this but, but at the same time it assumes that the whole apartment complex will have some affordable units plural not just one sticking out uh okay but yeah, there might be something uh, where the formula calls for 25 units, but the developer only wants to put in 20 affordable units. What's a buyout in something like that, as opposed to a buyout? Because we, we're, I don't want to beat this to death. We can talk about it later, but you just have to break this connection between a house and a studio apartment. They both count the same for the uh for the inventory for the inventory uh, right so the numbers are going to look different for what it costs to uh develop a studio apartment versus what it costs to develop a four-bedroom house exactly but this 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 discussion really isn't about our inventory it's about how much he's going to be contributing uh to the affordable housing trust in fact right. it goes that right. way but so it's also based, there's nothing to do with inventory but it's based on the cost of construction as well sure exactly exactly and it, and it costs less to build a studio apartment, is what Bill's saying, than a house. So we that that's where we got to try to we need to do some digging and, and and investigating on costs. Right. Okay. Yeah, I, I took a quick look at the example that um, you were discussing. Um, I think it's actually higher than one thirty, um, mm -hmm. based on the example of someone. Um, it, there was a clause that said in no case shall the per unit fee for a single family residential unit be less than 60,000. So that is your minimum. Um, but according to the example that we were looking at, that we were looking at based on the formula, it was closer to 185. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and if we go by the current cost of construction, oh my heavens! Yeah. So. Yeah, and and you know, like we were saying, there's the inventory number, but the the inventory doesn't differentiate if it's a studio or a four bedroom. You know, how many affordable, you know, family or in in individuals? So right. So we have some thought to put into that one. Yeah. I have some resources for the board um, with regards to both what um, Bill was asking about looking at apartments. Um, the thing is, I think most of those examples are coming from Eastern Mass just because right. more right. apartments. Um, but I think there's probably some intuition that can be drawn there um, to maybe have it ref be reflected in Hadley, which I know would be very um appropriate just kind of based on your population and based on where those apartments would possibly yeah. be as you know Hadley doesn't have any apartment complexes so be basic to be basing what has to be contributed to an affordable housing trust to base that on uh what it costs to build a unit in an apartment doesn't make much sense i wonder if they have any um calculations in any of the uh, our states are neighbors to the north, like uh, New Hampshire or Vermont or Maine, if any of them, you know, because they they would be more like us than than Eastern Mass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I'm looking at the case studies at the moment and they're when they call a rural case study Dennis on the Cape. That's yeah. Not that yeah, yeah. Here. So um we'll take a look and i think um vermont and new hampshire may have some um examples um but i will send over some links um, for the board to peruse for that um so i did some send something over this evening which was very specific to the permitting guide which um is one of the tasks that i'm working on in addition to what um the special events venue um bylaw work, um, which is also kind of happening on another parallel track. Um, but, you know, I will say that that particular um, document that I shared with you, let me just quickly open it, um, is very specific to your zoning bylaw. And I think it, my experience in working with building departments and the typical permits that the building department would oversee um, I wish Tom was still on, but I'm, I did send it over to Tom and Didi for them to take a look at to see if, um, you know, that made sense. Let me just quickly open. Um, yeah, I, I took a quick look. I kind of, I liked it. So I think the, the, the question for the board is, um, let me share this. The question for the board would be, um, uh, is there, are there any permits missing? Um, you know, the, the fact that you have, um, an online permitting system for the building department and board of health is great. And I didn't, I do, I did come to the town hall, uh, maybe a month or two ago to talk to the building department to kind of gain some insight into your electronic permitting. Um, and I understand, um, that to some extent, um, there may be some sharing of those permits, um. I guess is the sign off process for the planning board to sign off on any sort of uh, building permit that would maybe require some zo zoning review or a zoning permit. Um, but I think that's for future conversations that um, if, if the planning board wants to take a look at, to see how to integrate electronic permitting as some planning boards are starting to, um, that could be useful for the town. Uh, but with regards to um, this, and I'll, and I'll fix the formatting, um, the this particular section would be included into the final draft of the permitting guide, which initially you saw, this was the part that was missing. It was the common permits um, and licenses. It's very general, um, one or two family dwellings, the various residential type uses, um, I reflect, from the um, zoning bylaw, uh, particularly if there's our specific sections, um, 
you know, I think that if there are things that you don't think make sense, um, considering you're an agricultural town, trying to figure out like stables probably fit somewhere else. Um, but, uh, you know, taking a look at those types of uses that could be helpful um, further down the line. I was trying to pick and choose, which I thought um, would be some of the more frequently um, applied for permits. Um, but typically, you know, the, the residential permits are building permits. So like electrical work, gas fitting, septic, um, the conversion of a single family to two family, the requirement under um, your zoning bylaw for it to go before the, the Board of Appeals, um, your open space communities as required in your senior housing overlay district where the planning board, um, you know, oversees that special permit. Um, again, all related to residential type uses. But speaking, uh, you, before you was cluster housing. Um, I think that was just a particular term and I could change this term um, based on the fact that your requirement for open space suggests, or re your requirement for open space in a senior housing overlay district suggests that um, there would be clustering of homes. So it's oh, a general okay. term. Not in a general bylaw. Yeah. That, was, that was particular to senior housing, Joe. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, and I, th I think I can be very clear here and just say senior, any development in the senior housing overlay district, like housing development. Better, um, better. Okay, moving right along. Um, again, so all residential type permits, um, stormwater management discharge, that could also be applied to your commercial type site plan reviews. Um, you'll probably just want to like nitpick because again, I think this, a lot of this comes from my own intuition of having worked with planning boards and boards on residential permits, specifically with subdivision regulations or um, any sort of special permits because there was non-conforming use or um, some other weird um, type of permitting mechanism um, that this was self, for, for me, I thought was self, you know, explanatory. Um, the accessory uses, I think I ident identified the home occupation, uh, home office, home business, um, zoning bylaw, where you have um, various, you list various types of uses, um, and the planning board issues a special permit, site plan approval of that, and there are some specific standards and criteria within that section. Um, and again, this is, this was weird to me. It's like, oh, commercial golf course is the only one. <laughs> um, if, the, if there are other uses you think that are appropriate here, maybe, maybe the uses, and you can tell me if this makes sense, um, that, um, are protected by the zoning act, however, would require, could require some sort of um, additional permitting, um, whether it's a permitted use that would go straight to the building department or, you know, depending on the type of intensity of that particular agricultural use. Um, With agritourism work? Yeah, like the agritourism, like the things that I... I um, Roadside uh, vegetable exactly. stands? Things that you would review typically and what I have suggested in the zoning bylaw um, amendment that um, draft that um, you um, have seen. Um, so I'll put that in my notes. Yeah, would the farm stand, would that fall under agricultural or under retail? Or? Does the board often, I guess, I guess the question is, how does the board interact with those types of permits? Like if you know of a farm stand and you're like, oh, that wasn't there yesterday, but they're there today. Has the board seen that um, in some sort of setting or is it you leave it to the understanding that it's a protected um, use? It should come before some board because certainly there's somebody selling pumpkins and gourds uh, versus an ice cream parlor with live music and a uh, food wagon truck. 
and a beer truck. Okay. Yes. So uh, generally, um, if people ask in advance, the building inspector will steer them to us for a threshold determination of whether we think they are uh, agriculturally exempt or potentially agriculturally exempt. That's appropriate. So um, is when, when you say, Bill, threshold determination, is there language within your bylaw that suggests that? Or is that more so the, the zoning enforcement officer saying to the applicant or the, um, the one that wants to have that particular use, go to the planning board and they'll tell you the permitting mechanism or uh, issue a waiver of site plan or something like that? Yeah, the latter. We uh, we don't really have a we don't really address it. it. We may come to address it depending on how we work at things out with event venues and uh, and okay. the like. Um, but we don't specifically. We just have it as a, an informal procedure at present. You have to take us on our honor that we're not arbitrary and capricious. Well, that's helpful. Um, so I think the next iteration, I'll probably add some of those uses and you can take a look. Um, institutional Oof. and just kind of typical. I think the biggest one is usually munici municipal uses, especially for the town. Um, you know, if there happen, you know, or schools, um, we can add schools here. Well, it, um, it, again, educational in, in this particular area is kind of important. Uh, Certainly they, you know, the Dover Amendment is always brought up, but the, there are certain parameters that we do have control over in the Dover Amendment. Yes. Poor water drainage, blah, blah, blah. Right. So. So, yeah, because I think looking at your table of uses for some <laughs> of those, for some of those uses that are protected by the Dover Amendment, they require at least a commercial site plan or some sort of, you know, it says C note one, which is your site plan approval process. Yep. Um, so it would, you know, probably be here notes, SPA, PB, um, zoning restrictions to suggest that, you know, if you're applying for there, there may be a certain district that you're allowed to develop those particular uses in, and there may be criteria that you have to follow. So likewise with municipal use, we've interpreted it as um, as with the Dover Amendment. And those have come, the, the library and the senior center, for example, came to us. Oh, okay. Um, for review to the extent we could review such projects. Oh, I do recall that. I think we were in the town hall and we had um, someone from, um, I think it was VHB came to where we were having meetings on the second floor and they were talking about the driveway for the senior center um, back when, I think it was, you know, early on, uh, definitely before the pandemic. So you're saying that you have overseen municipal uses Right. If, if it's if it's construed that way in the zoning bylaw, we'd like to that sometimes reorganizing or putting these things in a chart has been helpful to find things that um, weren't where they belonged. That makes sense. Which will which will be an announcement later. I'm going to suggest um, for the board. Um, but to to continue here. Um, you know, just taking the uses that you have and spelling out those permitting mechanisms. So this ends up being almost like a, a planning document or a planning board document or a ZBA document where these types of permits, um, whether or not they're more most frequently used, um, is specific to the land use permits that those the your your boards would be issuing. Um, so. Um, you know, again, this comes from the ZBA um, sale of new and used motor vehicles. You obviously um, oversee the uh, special permit site plan approval process and the select board typically issues a class two license. I don't know. And I just put that there because um, that's my knowledge of the 
of um, selling cars or selling vehicles um, that the select board, you know, has has a, an important role in that. Um, I added cannabis. There's solar here. Um, and then your industrial manufacturing, again, um, those are probably typical um, and typical based on your um, um, identification of the, you know, renewable alternative energy. Um, I know that um, you're trying to be trying to become a green community, possibly. Um, so that some conversation about how how this is, um, you know, brought forth um, is is present in this document, and then the business licenses, which is kind of your general um, catch-all for um, the various um, you know uh, authorities that issued them, the select board and board. Um, and that's this document. And again, this falls and is in the context of where this would appear in. Um, this permitting guide, which I haven't touched, but um, the last revision was um, Jim's and it was regarding a uh, public notification for uh, conservation, um, the Conservation Commission. Um, so yeah, I guess, you know, that that's just for the board to peruse. I think if there are any additional notes or any additional types of uses that you'd like to put in there, um, it will rely on, you know, how it's listed in the zoning board um, or the zoning bylaw. Um, I was almost thinking the opposite, uh, Ken, in, in as much as that it's almost impossible to put down every potential use. Uh, you know, I see tanning salons in there, but, uh, <laughs> but we still uh, would like to have that catch-all phrase. If it's not a listed, if it's not listed oh, in yeah. uh it's not allowed i think that's very important so you know i think one of the disclaimers on this is at least in this common permits is like this list is not exhaustive go to the zoning bylaw um where there is a complete list i'm not going to list every use here that just would make this document you know yes. 20 more pages longer but i think your point on and in practice, how you have um, worked through your bylaw is that if it's not listed there, it's not a permitted use. So, you know, some Folks, language. I'm going to butt in here. I'm going to sign off. Feliz Navidad. See you next year. <laughs> Feliz Navidad. All right, Mikey. <laughs> Merry Christmas, bye everybody. Bye. Mike. Merry Christmas, Mike. All right, Merry Mikey. Good. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, um, So, yeah, that is um, that. So, I, you know, I will um make some initial edits based on our conversation this evening but if there are additional um revisions um please share them and i can definitely have this incorporated within the context of the permitting guide for the next meeting um i will also email um tom and dd to see um, the building permits, if there are additional building type permits that we should be including in there. Um, so that so that's it for the permitting guide. Um, I don't know if the board has had any conversations about the special event venue since the last time we met, um, but I, that's also part of the work that I've been thinking of. Um, this looks good. That's in the hands of the select board right now, for example, using the common for Asparagus Festival. Is that what you're referring to, Ken? No. No, that, that, that's that's as far as, that, that, well, that's kind of part, but this is more like setting up standards, like what, what can we regulate and how can we regulate farm stands that want a beer truck all year round or all, all summer round or on the weekends? How do we regulate a farm stand that wants a food truck. When does it, when, you know, th those are kind of the things with the, these, we're looking at with a permitting guide. Oh. We, we need, we need to, uh, he's, he can put that out of what, a couple, couple of meetings ago. And I would encourage you to print it out or at least look at it online and see what you think 
because uh, there's some things in there that are really good, some things that we need to uh, massage a little bit. But we try to get that. We want to get that on the uh, this spring town meeting because give me both the selectmen, policemen, selectmen, uh, police department, and fire department all would like to see something to try to get a handle on some of these things that are a little bit getting out of hand. At the very least, we need to get, we need to hear what's going on early on so we can decide whether the, uh, you know, the, uh, whether the fire chief has to do the permitting on the food truck and the propane size of the propane tank they have. Yeah. The Board of Health will say your, 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 uh, your food service surfaces are clean enough, but the fire chief wants to know whether you have a 12 pound, uh, 20 pound propane tank or a hundred pound propane tank because the rules differ. You mean to say it's it's uh, we shouldn't wait for somebody to get salmonella or for one of those tanks to go off like a rocket? Not Among that. other things. And, then, and that's just two of the items. There's a lot more than that. And I know, traffic, I know. traffic backed up on the side of the road for a quarter mile in each direction. Yeah. So they're, they're this, these are all the things we want to try to get a handle on for next summer. And if we can do something at the annual town meeting, um, that would be the elk. That would be our. That that is our goal. And, and I think can the, it, can the agritourism uh, is a nice catchphrase, but judging from the farmers in town, they don't like people wandering over their land or inspecting their cows or hogs or whatever. Yeah, uh, I don't think it, this is intended for them. It's intended no. for those that are having those types of events where you're going to have increased traffic where presumably um the the nuisance that's created by the amount of people going to what typically is protected right because it's agricultural use um has now created impacts to the entire town and to the to the the neighborhood okay. um, so there is there there are bylaws that have been passed by the attorney general's office that suggest that there is a way for a town to regulate those types of events. Um, I think you have to be very specific um, as to, you know, whether it's a site plan approval or a special permit. Um, I think in the example, one of the examples that I shared was when I was the town planner in Southbridge, where we identified um, you know, specific scenarios for a site plan approval, which may have been that particular use increases parking by 20 spaces a day or something like that. Um, among, um, and it was all, always usually related to parking um, and uh, and how the, um, the flow of traffic was within the site and on the right of way. Um, versus a special permit being required for something like having a um, having that particular venue or parcel have weddings or um, you know a restaurant. Um, what we're after, Joe, is somebody that says well, that, I agree. We're on the same page. So yeah. okay, all right, all right. So okay. So I can I can re. Um, Along with this, I can resend all of that um, just so that people may have it closer to the top of their um, mailbox. Um, yeah, and that please way. do. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Would you, if you could please resend that stuff, Ken, just so we'll have it in one package. Yes, I will. All right. Other than that, um, you know, I I know that the the inclusionary zoning might or the payment in lieu of might be a, a more immediate thing now, as now that you're exploring and have scheduled some time for that discussion. Um, and I'm happy to help, however I can, with some of those items. Okay, so you're you're available for the first 
January meeting. Yes. Which will be the 3rd of January. Correct. January 3rd. Okay. Okay. Very good. Okay. Yeah, I think that's yeah. That's a full. That's a full plate. The uh, the payment in lieu formulas, uh, the permitting guide, and the venue yeah. permitting. Yeah. Um, yeah. If we can get venue permitting to Springtown meeting, that'd be great. So you'll be posting, I guess, for the. Um, I think you probably will have to for the um, payment in lieu of, I don't know if you did that before um, or did you, how did you handle that? Well, I think it was going to be a regulation. So we posted for, um, okay. I'm planning for adoption of regulations and we adopted some and then kept on continuing that one until we had beaten it to death. Um, so, I suspect we have authority, or there, there's authority in the bylaw. We don't have a regulation in place. Um, I suppose one can be done on an ad hoc basis, but we should have a regulation in place. Or maybe the whole thing is, is sort of a moot point. Since, um, um, I don't know how much work it is worth going through um, for one subdivision yeah well let, let, let's see what we come up with is you know let's these let's come up with either a number or a formula and depending what we come up with for that item we can we can repost if we want to adopt it we can publish publish it if we want to adopt the regulation but i got a feeling with the current cost of everything um it's going to be pretty high and you're not going to find too many developers that are going to want to put that kind of money in and they're going to find a way to do an apartment someplace in town. Yeah. So, but let's, let's come, come up with a number then from there we can act. Sounds good. So I'll put you down for next on one, three, 23 got to get used to writing that down yeah <laughs> okay thank you ken yes thank you you have been you are most helpful yes i know i appreciate all of your hard work i mean it, that's what makes it exciting to work with the board is that you're all very indebted and have um you know that um advocacy and that um you know you're working towards understanding these concepts more so that's what i like about working with happen but you might even think we were planning instead of reacting <laughs> yeah exactly very proactive so this is yeah that's we, exciting we, we, have, we have done enough reactive we're trying to do some planning right <laughs> and i'm happy to help <laughs> I mean, and you have. Yeah. I, think we, I think we said that when not so much, well, even when Joe came on, when Joe Bell and I got on the board, I think of our planning, our zone bylaw was somewhere around 16 pages. <laughs> oh, wow. And it was a little booklet of 16. It wasn't full size, eight and a half by 11. It was a little booklet of 16 pages. Um, but Bill, yeah. Joe, and I have copies of it. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's about the size of a little. The book's about the size of a, of a phone, a cell phone. Yes. Wow. That's the size of the booklet, and that was about 16 pages. It is now, what, 130, something like that? You get, uh, you get more documentation to assemble a, a table than you had for, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think just a, a comment, um, as I mentioned earlier, with regards to taking a look at your bylaw and whatnot. Um, district local technical assistance um, proposals will be, or the announcement for them will be going out probably within the next two weeks. Um, I actually won't be reviewing it this time, um, but what I will say is if there are tasks that you think um, the board or the town 
may want to um, take a look at and maybe apply for um, within the next two, three weeks. Um, that proposal will be out or that request for proposals will be out and the board will have to um, submit something. I think it's the day after Martin Luther King, um, at least tentatively. I think that's what I saw in the draft. So just to let you know that that, that request is going out soon. Okay. So what you know of our situation, is there anything you'd suggest we apply for, Kim? So I think... Um, as I've been working with a couple of the planning boards and attempting to get um, zoning bylaw reviews, um, particularly um, to take a look at reorganization. I know that you've done a great job of doing um, some of that with the definitions, but okay. I think that it might be helpful to, to take a look at the table of uses. Um, I think... Um, and maybe see how some of these particular uses are being interacted with. I think the fact that Bill identified municipal uses being overseen by the planning board, where in the bylaw, I think it suggests the zoning board of appeals um, as the permitting authority, um, that's probably something to take a look at uh, among other things, but zoning bylaw review, um, any other type of implementable things. We're going to be finishing up the affordable housing plan. Um, so we'll probably get that on the agenda um, for the board to approve in the next two months. Um, but yeah, I don't, and I don't know. I think there, if there's other items that you may be looking at that we can help with and, and help have it fu be funded by district local technical, technical assistance, planning board rules and regulations, we also hired two new planners, um, so they will be assisting me. Um, and one of them has great experience with municipalities. So um, I'm looking forward to her assistance on a couple of these projects um, in the coming year. But um, I would say zoning bylaw review um, could be something that we're, that the board could look at. Um, oh. And maybe the planning board rules and regs, getting that. Okay. We'll keep an eye out for it. Right. Ken, on the uh, re regarding the uh, housing uh, committee that we've got, we never set up another meeting. You and I were going to discuss when we should have one. Any yeah. su any suggestions when we when you might be ready with with a with a final draft or something? Well, the thing is, um, we're still trying to get that one piece of data that the that the committee has requested about the aquifer coverage. Um, or the, yeah, the watershed coverage, there was um, a f percentage that I can't, for whatever reason, we can't figure it out and we haven't gotten what we needed. Um, but I think the draft as you've seen it, um, other than that and some some of the minor things that we corrected since the last meeting um, is done. Um, we're still, I'm still waiting for the comments, as I mentioned from DHCD Okay. Um, that would suggest that they would approve it um, based on the way that it was presented. I think that's the biggest thing um, that I, I'd like, but um, I foresee that happening. And knowing that I work with the board, um, that maybe scheduling something, well, I'm going to be gone for that for a good chunk of January. Um, so maybe the end of January or the beginning part of February. Um, okay. well, getting... we, we have time. We have, in that case, we have time to schedule something. So let's yeah. hold off a little bit. Okay. okay. I just want to let that fall while and miss it. Oh, I don't either. And, you know, working with the board, I'm going to make sure that it doesn't fall off because we Thank want you. you to get that approved plan. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll figure that timeline out. Okay. That's fine. Just want to double check. All right. Okay, um, so we'll, we'll, we will see you on the 3rd of January, our first meeting in next year. Yeah. And um, have a good Christmas, happy new year, healthy new year. Thank to you, board, and we'll see you in yes. three. Okay, thank right. you. Have a good night. Thank you, Ken. Um, other items, Mr. Dwight? Well, I have no bills to pay. Uh, we, we should talk about the budget. It's that's, what I was, that's just going to make say that we should talk about a budget for next year. Um, seeing the town where it is, I'm just going to make a recommend a suggestion 
then we just let all fund our budget. Second. Any, no. Any, any no increases ex expected, right? So we're actually in a decent uh, place. Uh, Shyla has has sent me some draft by uh, draft minutes to look over to just be sure that she's on the right track. I have not had a chance to get to those, so we haven't we haven't dipped into that line item yet. Okay. Uh, but she has put some time in on it, and if I can get this turned around and get um, get her going, we we. We should be in good shape on that line item because we're halfway through the year and we haven't really used it. But right. I think for next year, if we can use it more evenly across the year, it'll probably be fine. Okay. And she's also in a position where she may not be able to take on much more time in the immediate future anyway. So Okay. So basically we're we're of the opinion of level fun next year. Yeah. Okay. What's our budget for education? Uh, hold on, I got it right in front of me. Uh, let's see. Tuitions and meetings, our budget is five hundred dollars. Of which That's this year, we, person. of which this year, I think we spent zero. <laughs> We're frugal. Yeah. Yeah, we have we have not expended any money on that yet. Okay. We also have a budget of eighty dollars on dues, and that used to be used to be so that we could belong to the Massachusetts Planning Board Association or some such thing. That mm. group has disbanded. Good Lord, Joe, do you remember when? Uh, it, it it was about 12, 12, 15 years ago. But yeah. the uh, the resource that came out of what was the guy's name? You could call Don him. Smith. On that's got you call him on any zoning question, bang, bang, bang. He had it. So, so yeah. yep. he was retired. He was a guru. Yep. And statewide he was recognized as, as a guru. No, no <laughs> say you call him like Joe said, he had an answer. And if he didn't have it, he would get you one <laughs> and get back to you. He retired and nobody has taken over that slot that I know of because when, when, we, when you adopt the zoning bylaw, you're going to send, I have to send notices out to all kinds of people. This particular one used to go to Don Schmidt at EOCD. There it is, yes. And Executive Office of Communities and Development. And when he retired, it now just goes to EOCD, not to any particular person. Attention, and right. It kind of goes to no man's land. It's lost. I mean, before it would go to Don, and sometimes I would get a phone call or a, a uh, not an email, but a, a mail asking him about a question. He would he would call me or leave a note. Hey, Jim, watch out for this. The way you've got this worded isn't quite right. Now, EOCD, you only hear about something if the, if the attorney general rejects it. One funny comment, too. Before, we used to send the notices to each surrounding town. And I neglected to send one to Holyoke. I said, no, Holyoke doesn't touch Hadley. He said, yes, it does. So right in the middle of the river. <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's a little tiny piece at the end of East Hampton and Hockenham where yeah. we touch Holyoke. I don't know if it's 50 feet. I, I know. And, but, you know, I used to, when I, when I took over sending out these notices, I used to send notices to everybody. And we probably used to get, Next to no notices. Yeah. After, about, after about two or three years of sending out the notice, I mean, we get it from Amherst all the time. Um, but when I, I all of a sudden I noticed, I started getting it from Holyoke now. So yeah. somebody kicked them in the butt and made, made them notice, hey, you, you touch Hadley. You yeah. got to send out these notices. Yeah. So anyways. Um, Interesting. Okay, so I will... I will uh, put the budget in for level funding next year. Um, that. I have nothing else. Anybody okay. have anything? I have nothing else. I'm good. All right. Um, 
Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.